Today's Lunch and Learn topic is going to be about BAQs and a BAQs, um, which is a new feature in 2023 too. So, so first, what is a BAQ? This is we're not going to go into depth into BAQ general stuff, but just in case you're unfamiliar with it, uh, it's a visual tool used to help query the Epicor database. If you need uh, any informational information on BAQs, more basic stuff, uh, check out the Coda Bears YouTube channel. We have tons of content there covering BAQs in various forms. All right, so BAQs as a source for a BAQ. So in 2023.2, you can create a BAQ then use that BAQ as a data source for other BAQs. So what this does is it allows you to keep your most commonly used BAQs modular and reusable. All right, so how to add a BAQ to a BAQ. Uh, first, this is only available in the Kinetic BAQ Designer, um, and you get to the add it in the overflow menu in the top right and query references, and I'll show this all in a demo later. Um, there's just some common things I want to talk about now. When you go there, the first thing you're going to see is a how to execute, and this is important. Uh, this is how that referenced query is pulled in. Uh, there's three options. You have a CTE, which stands for Common Table Expression. This will pull data directly from the database each time it's called. You also have the table variable. This pulls data using a table name. It's faster than a CTE, when rows are less than 1,000, but it runs before the main query. And then you have a temp table. This builds a temp table in memory. It's faster than a CTE with more than 1,000 rows and runs before the main query. By default, use as a CTE is going to be selected. All right, below that, you're going to see how to map parameters. So if your main or your, your referenced BAQ has parameters, you have to decide how you want to handle those parameters and you have four options here. So the first option is show in parameter list. Now this will show it independently of other parameters and it'll have the, the naming style of the query name underscore the parameter so you can differentiate it. There is set to empty value. Uh, this means that the user must always type in that parameter manually. You cannot pass it in through a BPM or through a screen or something like that. Um, and then you have map to existing parameter. This means you can pass a parameter that you create in your main query down to your reference query. And they share the same then. Then you also have set to a scalar value. This means you can set it to just a, a, a specified value. That it'll just always run as that defaulted value. Okay, so how do you add a reference query to your main query? So in here, uh, you'll see that in your BAQ designer, you'll see your tables, connect tables, subqueries, and here you'll see a new little section called reference queries. And you'll be able to drag and drop it into the query designer, just like you, and you can then do joins and do whatever you need to, just like you would with an, another subquery that you're bringing from that same query. Um, here's something to note though, a BAQ that contains a reference query cannot be used as a reference query for another BAQ. You can only do it one time. So if you have one query that you're pulling in to a, as a reference query to main query, that whole BAQ is no longer valid to be used as a reference query for another BAQ. All right, so now we're going to do a little demo on this. So here I'm in Epicor 2023.2, and I'm in the BAQ designer, the new kinetic version. In here, I'm just going to show I made this customer orders one query. Uh, now this is just a really basic query. All it does is just get gets a customer num as a parameter and then it gets the orders related to that customer num, their lines and the part on that line. And we're gonna go ahead and make a new query here. And I'm just gonna call this BAQ in a BAQ, give it a description, launch and learn. We'll take these and we'll save it. So now I need to go to the query designer screen here. The first thing I need to do is add it as a reference. And that's over here in the top right on the overflow menu. You'll see that query references that I was talking about. So I'm gonna click there. And you can see here, we can add some queries as references. So I'm gonna click the add new. And here I could type the name if I wanted. I can also just use the search. So I'm gonna search it. I'm gonna find that customer orders one query that I just showed. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm brought into that screen with the how to execute and the mapping parameters. So here are the how to execute. I'm just gonna leave this as a CTE, um, but this is where you would change it. You see here there's table variable and there's temp table. Here is your where your map your parameter so you can see 
that that cust num parameter I had in my query before showed up here, and now I can set how I want to map it. So here's the drop down. So I have that show parameter in list with prefix, set to empty map value, map to existing parameter, and set to a scalar value. I'm going to leave it as show in parameter list with prefix for now, then hit OK, then hit OK. So now that query is now added as a reference query. So now if I go into my subqueries here, I can see here in reference queries, I see customer orders one. And I can now drag this drop out. And now that reference query is now added in my query designer. So now for a quick example, I can go grab like ship detail, let's say, and do a join here. And we'll just join, we'll join on order num, we'll join on company, and then we'll join on order line and order line. Okay, so I set up my join. Now I can go to my display fields. And here I can see that it comes up as its own table. So I can just grab everything from there, let's say. And we'll go to ship detail and we'll just get the pack num and the pack line. So now if I go run this query, I'm prompted for my custom. And you can see here it says customer orders one underscore custom. So I know that that is the same parameter that I'm passing down. So that would say I had an additional custom parameter in my main query, but I, for some reason, I needed two different customs. I don't see why you would, but it, you could do it. Um, then you would have both here, and one would just say custom, and that would be for the main query. Hit OK. And now you can see that I pulled in all that data from my reference query here in addition to what I created in the main query. Now, this could be done in one query. It was just a basic example. I have one more of a more practical example. So I'm going to go back here and find here. I made a customers by region, a customers by region. And this query, go to query designer, just will take customer table. And then I have a parameter for territory ID. And I'll just get them by their territory ID. So I have another query I made. I made this one, top customers for order here. So in here, I have a inner query that just gets references the customers by region query there and joins it to order head to get all the orders for the customers for that region. And my top level, then I just have another query that just sums up how many orders each customer has for that area to get a total amount. So if I go over and preview this, test it, you can ask for a region. I'm gonna use US, let's do US mid for the Midwest. And now you can see I got all my customers in my Midwest region and I, I got a count of how many total orders each one has placed. So you can see here Dalton has placed 113, Addison has placed 71, blah, blah, blah. So I can see who my top customers are in this region. Now let's say uh, I want to not want to get region. Let's say I just care about the state. I only about customers from Minnesota. So what I can do then is if I go back to my home and I go back to my customers by region query, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. Most of the parameters are strings, so I'm going to leave my parameter name, even though it's called territory ID. But I'm just going to change this from territory to state and then save. And now if I go back to BAQ Studio and go back to my other query, now when I run this, the test, it's still called territory because I didn't change the name of it, but I did bind it to the state instead. So if I type MN, now I only get my orders from MN. So you can see anything that changed on that reference query on that lower level got brought up. So this is good if you're going to use this like customers by region or customers by state, however you want to use it, if you wanted to use it in multiple reports. So instead of you're looking at just orders, you wanted to also look at maybe you had a different one for shipments or whatever, um, you could use that one query. And if you were to change how you want to look at that data, you can change the underlying reference query. And that change would be applied to all the queries that use it as a reference query. So it keeps things, instead of having to write the same query for each report every time, you can just reference it in other places. That does come with a little bit of a, a downside because if you change it one place, you're changing it everywhere then. So you got to be mindful of that. Also, when you do make changes to your reference query, if you do something like change columns that are used, that has the potential to break your main query and you'll have to then also adjust the main query to account for the changes you made to the reference query. So one last thing I wanted to mention about these uh, BAQs and BAQs, exporting and solution. So when you export uh, uh, BAQs, I don't know why I put directives, that should say BAQs. Uh, when you export your BAQs, when you go to export them, it prompts you to include any reference queries as part of the export. And you'll get this little pop-up here that says, this query references one other query queries. Do you want to export them as well? And you can say yes or no. If you say yes, what will happen is it will go through and export each BAQ that is referenced and you it'll export them individually. So you still have to import them separately, um, but it, it, at least it's smart to know, hey, 
this query uses other queries, you probably might want to export those too. Um, solutions, however, will not prompt you for any reference queries, but they will show a warning when the solution gets built, and I have it highlighted here. Uh, it says you build the solution, and then it says warning, this query references another query, and it shows the ID, so it says customer orders one. Please export it as well, or make sure it exists in the target system where you import this query. So that's something to be mindful of. So solutions won't auto grab everything you need. You would have to either know all your reference queries or rebuild your solution with the reference queries in place then after you build it and you get that warning. All right, any questions? Uh, from James, does the same functionality apply to external BAQs? I believe so, but at the same limitations also apply. And I believe you cannot mix and match external BAQs with internal BAQs. You cannot use an external BAQ as a reference for an internal BAQ or vice versa. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.